Today, we are talking about digital products with Sandra. Sandra, I'm so happy to have you back on the channel with Coffee with Kittle. And I know people are going to get a ton of value. I'm going to get a ton of value. I have a notes, a fresh notes app open right here just to get knowledge from you because I know you're absolutely incredible at teaching and formulating digital products, doing research, using Kittle and even other apps to create stuff. And so obviously I have your channel linked down in the description for people to check out. Um, what I would like to do is actually start our conversation based off of one of your recent videos about easier digital products to craft. I think that, as you know, a lot of people are in the hype of print on demand, which is fine. Print on demand is cool. It's awesome. You, you, there's much money to be made there. Uh, passive money to be made there, so to speak, once you get things rolling. Um, but I think you and I are both in agreement that digital products are uh, like maybe kind of coming up on our ranking as like better because you make them once, uh, you sell them a ton and there's no refunds and <laughs> there's 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 no returns or exchanges or anything. And I don't know, you can just you can just sell a whole lot more of them uh, depending on your niche and your audience. So maybe if you can give us like a brief kind of play by play of, of your recent video uh, talking through these, I think it was five, maybe five, uh, five digital, digital products. Pro yeah. And what I, what I wanted to know, like while I was watching that video, I, I was like, I was like, Oh, I want to ask you like, where'd you like, where I know you go into like here, looking at examples on Etsy, but it's like, what, what drew you to even search that in the first place? You know? So maybe if you just want to talk about each of those products and why, like, why are they easy? And why should people kind of get started with it? Like, I don't want there to be any fear of people like setting up and selling like digital or printable products. So the five digital products that I talk about, how I found them is by using an Etsy research tool. So mm -hmm. I always recommend, especially for new Etsy sellers coming in, it's really important to have a research tool, whether you're using the free version or a pro version, because most of the ones that I use, they either have a free trial or they do have a free version where you can get some really valuable information. In the last video, I use a tool called Allura. And oh. what's great about it is you can not only find the most like trending digital products within the last 30 days, but you can actually figure out how much each product is generating for each seller. So you can- Oh, wow. So the, the actual profit. Oh yeah. Yeah. So you oh, can okay. actually, you can go into like the shop analyzer. So you can go into a shop that's been making hundreds of thousands of sales with, you know, in digital products, and you can actually look at their top listings. So you can see which ones are generating the most traffic and sales. Like you can get all of this really specific information that will help you determine what you need to create in order to make sales. So one of the main ones that I talk about, and I talk about this a lot on my channel is printable wall art. Now the mm. reason uh, printable wall art is just so great because it's creative, it's fun to, to make, but it is a competitive niche, but I do talk about how you can get into a very specific type of printable wall art and focus on that within your shop. So one okay. of the digital products I talk about is more of like a vintage style, muted, um, like moody type of wall art that is performing really, really well on Etsy. And I show a couple of example shops right. and I show how you can create that type of wall art using Kittle AI. So getting mm -hmm. very specific with the prompt and then changing um, like the contrast, the saturation to make it sort of more moody and what's trending. So okay. that's one of the, the products that I talk about. Um, and that's really, I would say it's easy to create because first you can take a look at Etsy and see which ones are getting the most sales. Um, not only using Allura, but you can also go into the shops, go into their um, listings and scroll down and you can see which products are getting the most reviews and mm, what people are okay. saying about those products, right? Right. So getting an idea of the aesthetic that's doing really well, you can kind of customize your prompt using a tool like Kittle AI to get something similar. Like, of course, have your own style, your own aesthetic and, you know, type of wall art that you offer. But I show kind of step by step how I created like a field of wildflowers and then I changed the contrast and saturation. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of the difference between uh, style style and product and niche, right? The, all of these three, all these three things, right? Cause it, I think it's pr perhaps most tempting. And what I think that a lot of users hear is when they go and they watch these videos of some creators, you know, 
they, they, they may be interpreting it wrong is like, we're going to look at this shop. And so the shop is doing really successful. So we just copy the shop. Right. Right. <laughs> like, so, so yeah, it's, there's, there's a, there's a bit of learning how to interpret the research, which is what using the tool that you mentioned can do for you. Because when you can go and click through and look at these shops, you can say, what I really liked what you said is about more of the style. Like, okay, so I can see the retro moody muted is doing well in these kinds of things. How do I attribute that to flowers or mountains or right? So I'm not copying whatever this person has just done, but this style is clearly uh, like people want that style. Does that make sense? No, exactly. And what I love to do is I always create like an inspiration folder on my laptop okay. so that I'm not just looking at one shop and then mm. just copying all of the wall art that's like their best sellers and all of that. I look at at least 10 to 20 competitive shops and I look at their best sellers and I try to almost look at the overall like like feel and mood of the of the art i'm not just that. taking you, you know what i mean like the, not the just one the piece part. and just saying i'm going to copy this one piece exactly right. am i seeing specific like objects come up or colors coming up and sort of combine that to implement into my own shop if that makes sense oh yeah 100 percent yeah. So I would like kind of save a bunch of like, and again, like an inspiration folder. It's kind of like having like a, even like a Pinterest board. You can go onto Pinterest as right. well. Same thing yeah. where you can have like an inspiration board and just collect tens and hundreds of images and just kind of look at it from a bird's eye view to just kind of see the trends. And it'll really help you figure out what you can create for yourself, just in a more unique version for yourself. Yeah. And yeah. And I, I think that's, that's especially a great thing to do with with wall art, like you said. I I, I think you were kind of on to uh, you were on on the right path in saying that it's easy to create. You know, relatively competitive. You know, a lot of people doing printable or digital wall art, right? Because it is easy to create. However, you know, what do you do? What, can you do the research to find the thing that people want? You know, the, the the lower the bar of entry, the more people will do it. But the less people, I think, stick with it. Right. So the less people get into the weeds, if you will. Yes. And so, yeah, I think that's for wall art, it's especially important. Yeah, 100%. And that just brought me to two points, actually, that I was thinking about. So first, there is no point of competing against really major like big shops like the big players they're already successful they've already got mm. the hundreds of thousands of sales the tons of reviews they have that social proof there's no point of coming in and creating something exactly the same because like no one's going to come to your shop that has zero sales, zero reviews. You right. have to give them a reason. You have to get, okay. have some sort of unique selling proposition. Um, the second thing too, is I always find that your style will find you. So hmm. when you come in as a new seller, don't just come in and create like two or three pieces and hope that somebody's going to come in and buy it just because you've posted them. I made sure. that mistake in the very beginning. You need to come in and create 20 pieces, 30 pieces that are around a specific collection and a specific theme. And you will start to see from your analytics. I always say after 30 days, take a look at your analytics and see which listings are getting the most traffic, the most favorites, and then create a collection off of that. So you might have created wall art where you've got the beach, you've got waves, sand, and then you've got another like small collection of wildflowers in a field and those ones are performing better then create a collection around that so your style is kind of finding you and your niche whether you like it or not is going to adjust it's going to pivot based on what people are gravitating towards gotcha okay all right so that's that's great advice for not only the the wall art but for just shops in general what, what what's the second digital product you mentioned um fun educational printables for kids so like oh, learning okay. yeah it was uh it was a fun one actually and i created one kind of from scratch but now that i love the fact that kittle has the multiple art boards because mm. um the educational printables that I found, they usually have like a few pages in there. So um, yeah, you can create sort of like reward charts. That was one that I found was a bestseller oh, okay. in a few of the shops. Yeah. So you can either purchase uh, clip art from, you know, from stock image, like websites and things like that. Or you can create some using elements within Kittle um, to create a reward chart. And they're very easy. Like I created one, I think within 
10 minutes or something, literally just add in your own text, um, mm. have some fun fonts in there and just very colorful. That's what obviously yeah. it's, it's for kids. So that's what oh, people are going to be drawn to. Right. Yeah. So I basically use just watercolor, um, mm. squares, circles, watercolor stars for the rewards. Um, very easy to create, but very valuable. And why do you think, why do you think people are are searching for that um, per se. I mean, you're you're uh, you're a parent, you know. Of, of course, it's, I don't know if we're filling out any star charts right now, but um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I just I'm, I'm interested to know perhaps why you think people are searching on on a place like Etsy um, for that. I mean, other than just that, there's parents and they want something downloadable that they've thought about or seen from school, perhaps. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's it's a couple of things. First, Etsy is known to be more of the um, like unique handmade goods. So it's like really, it's fun to look at Etsy to look for like creative, like just like unique handouts that you can give to your kids because they're they're fun, okay. not okay. that easy to find. Yeah, and it's it's more like handcrafted, you know. Even though it's digital, it you know it was created it with love feeling. by you know, yeah. and and that's what Etsy's known for, right? Um, but also as uh, like as a new mom, I'm also looking at budget and convenience. So finding mm -hmm. these printables on Etsy, they're First of all, they're only like five, six dollars each. And if you have your own printer, you can by convenience, I mean, you could literally just print it out. You don't have to go out to a shop and find these. You could find exactly what you're looking for. And because they're just so, like I mentioned, unique and fun, mm. you can find so many different types on Etsy where it's just a quick click of the button and then you can just print it out and use it for your kids that same day. Yeah. So that's kind of how I would view it, especially as a new mom. So yeah. hopefully that makes yeah. sense. No, definitely convenience and obviously price, you know, as opposed to from trying to order from some, I don't know, authoritative educational association online for $20 or, or perhaps a whole booklet or something that you don't want. You can just yeah. do one sheet. It's going to look super different, super custom, right? It's going to look, it's going to have that kind of handcrafted collage feel or something to it that that's vibrant that kids will enjoy. So I think you're, you're definitely right. The convenience of just... Just there's just so many far reaching niches or just products in general, invoices and SOWs and all of this stuff on Etsy that people search for. That's like, why are they why are they searching for this on, on Etsy? But it's convenience, you know? Yeah, no, for sure. And I thought of another thing too. Um, and this kind of goes to like how to pick your niche, but hmm. as a new mom, like I'm I'm going to be buying printables for my kid as well. And I've actually bought a few printables recently. Like a lot of people okay. ask, like, do people actually even buy printable wall art? Like, why wouldn't you just go to the shop and buy something that's already framed? And sure. actually, I bought four uh, pieces of printable wall art from a specific shop that I wanted to decorate my nursery with. And there's a couple of reasons for this, because first I wanted to pick my frames. I wanted to customize exactly what I, mm. oh, and I got to pick the size of the wall art too. Okay. Um, you know, whether I wanted like a 16 by 20 or 12 by 18, but also I love the feeling of supporting other shops. And mm. the reason I say this kind of helps you pick your niche is a lot of the time we pick a niche that we resonate with and our target audience is kind of either us or someone that we have um, identified as in the past. Yes. So I find that a lot of these shops that sell, you know, nursery printable wall art or fun educational printables for kids, they're also parents, you know, or they look after kids themselves. So they know what their target audience is looking for. So I find that the printables that I buy, it's usually by parents that have created these stores. And I love also supporting them. So that's another reason too, um, that I find a lot of people shop on Etsy. They want to support people that they uh, resonate with. Yeah. Yeah. That's so good. That's, that's, that's great to hear, uh, these, these questions asked because I, I found myself, that, you know, asking those questions as well. Do people really buy printable wall art? I mean, we have, you know, cause we have a friend that has some pretty stellar, uh, you know, prints and posters and we have them cause he makes like kind of funny bathroom poster, design, yeah, right. Funny. They're really funny and they kind of, they kind of join things that you wouldn't think together, you know, like, and that's what makes it funny. And so, you know, they're like $5 a piece, just had them printed out, you know, right down the, the way at Staples or whatever for, you know, eight, $9 a pop or whatever. So then we got to choose our own, uh, you're right. You get to choose your own frame. I didn't think about that, that, that way. So, I mean, it's really nice hearing people ask, like, do people actually buy printables and then having reasons as to why someone would, and more than just like, 
because because you can like you know because you can print it yourself i don't think that's like the best answer right yeah no i I get this question a lot like there's a lot of i hate to say pessimists that just say like i like what's the point of creating this am i wasting my time Mm. and all of that but i've been there too yeah and fair enough yeah no i remember even when i first started i did not think that what I, cre- I thought I was wasting my time truly. And when I mm. got my first sale, I was like, oh my gosh, this actually does work. And it was so lovely to see people sending me photos of them framing their wall art. Ah, uh, yeah. Because like, you know, and because again, they get to customize it. And size is also really important. I actually created a recent video as well, where you want to create multiple sizes within each piece so that you allow your customers to customize, you know, how, how big they want it, where they want to, um, um, like display it, whether it's on their desk or on their wall. Um, so yeah, just kind of giving your customers a lot of options on how to use your wall art. That's another thing too. So, all right. So what's, what's our third, um, easy digital product. Um, so the next one that I talk about is, uh, planners actually. So, um, specifically for mental health, um, and wellness and, there's a shop that I specifically talk about that's generating over 50 grand a month. It's Oh my gosh. It's what? wild. <laughs> um, and again, I, I find that through Allura as well, that you can okay. see that the shop is generating, I think it's like something like 55,000 in revenue a month. A month? Uh, yes. Yeah. Selling all of these um, just planners and uh, journals, like gratitude journals and things like that. And it's a very important type of product. And a lot of people would resonate with that. Okay. And this is why I always say it's so important to find a very specific target audience because you can cater specifically to them and understand their needs. Um, so once again, with Kittle's new feature, the multiple artboards, it is so easy now to create, let's say 10 pages for a planner and save that as a file. Mm. I've been selling planners from the beginning, like from my, like my most recent, not my most recent shop. Um, like the, the main shop that I have right now, I have quite a few listings where I sell planners and they sell really well. And one of my uh, best selling items is a self-care planner that has checklists and um, like a gratitude section uh, and affirmation section. And I and about, and about how long are, are those? I've always I've always wondered. I haven't gone in and, and purchased one, but about yeah, they're, yeah, yeah, they're all different. Mine is okay. only five pages, and wow, okay. yeah, it's only five pages, and I offer two sizes, so it's really ten pages, but it's only five different sheets that you would fill out. Okay, and with this shop like example that I share, they all vary. Some of them are it's only two pages, some of them are fifteen pages, um, and of course that would affect the price point. So I don't want people to think that they have to come. In in and create a massive bundle because these shops that have been on Etsy for years now have built that over time. So you can start with 10 listings and each listing has three pages or five pages. And eventually you can create a listing that has a bundle of a hundred pages, but because you've already created oh, that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I All think right. a lot of people come in and find it very daunting to create, you know, listings with just so many pages and they're like how can i compete with that well, you well that's don't. what i that's what i fear uh yeah what's I know. stopping me i think is like well i mean i would have to give the value i mean i have to have at least 15 pages you know that, that those are the questions yeah. that's happening in my head because I, you know i have ideas for what i think would be a cool planner <laughs> i think uh but it's like if i if i start i'm just like i, I think sometimes i have my in product in mind which would be something pretty uh robust maybe Mm -hmm. um but perhaps that's not the perhaps that's not the case and so me and other people are probably setting up the expectation like way too high yeah the reason i can speak to this so well is because i'm not only an etsy seller but i'm also an etsy customer and i have looked at different listings before where i'm comparing listings that only have let's say i'm looking at clip art because i've purchased so many packages of clip art on Etsy and other marketplaces. Sure. And there are packages that will have like 50 different pieces. And then there'll be packages that only have like 10 different pieces. And many times I've gone for the smaller package because I love the quality more, like Mm. the type of wall art that's being offered. It's just more my aesthetic and what I'm looking for. So I've noticed it's not quantity. It's 100% quality, even um, templates that I've purchased where I've like, I've purchased ebook templates before because I sell a few ebooks and I will really resonate more with a template that only offers maybe five different 
di- like types of pages. And then there will be ones that offer like a hundred types of pages. Mm-hmm. And to be honest, I actually find those more overwhelming well, um, sure. to, lo- yeah. to look at so many different options. I just want it to be easy. I just want like five or 10 and then I'll work with that. And you'll also notice a lot of um, packages on Etsy that offer 500 different like Instagram templates or something like that. And it's not, they perform well, but again, these sellers did not just come in and you, you know create this bundle of their first listing and it became a bestseller. They started off slow and that's what mm, every okay. seller should do, you know? Right. So yeah, yeah, reduce the friction and just start. So that's great advice. So that would be, the, I think that would be, so that was number three. Um, yeah, that was number three, yes. And then the next digital product that I talk about is selling wedding program templates. So Interesting. that's very specific. So um, I, yeah, love I thought talking- you were going to, I thought you were going to say invitations. Yes. Uh, yeah. I love talking about this one because this was something I used to sell like years ago. Cause I used to be in the wedding industry and people oh. that follow my YouTube channel, if they've seen kind of like my older videos, I talk a lot about like being in the wedding industry and I was creating wedding stationery. And, um, and I, ca- I started on Etsy with a very competitive niche. Like, to be honest, I think the wedding industry is probably the most competitive on Etsy. Um, oh, I, w- I think I could see that. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think, it, yeah, it definitely like that and like a couple more, but definitely that's one of the biggest. And, um, and there's a lot of like really big players that have been on Etsy for so many years and it's really hard to compete with them. But the best way to compete is not to go for the minimalist invitations, minimalist menus. I find that those are just incredibly competitive. So find products that are not being offered as frequently as something like a seating chart or like, um, what else? Yeah. Like, like I mentioned menus or name tags and things like that. I found that wedding infographic templates and program, like church program templates, and even like, um, the reception program templates are very like much lower in competition. And a lot of people are searching for them on Etsy. Um, and I used to sell infographic templates. Like, I think I mm. even still have the posting on my Instagram. I never deleted it. Um, and I, I sold many of those back then because I recognized even back then that it was lower competition. And still to this day, not many shops offer it, as at least relatively speaking. And, and, so, what, and what is a wedding infographic? Um, the infographic just, it kind of, so it's basically information using graphics. So basically it has, um, and I got, again, like I purchased like clip art from websites like Etsy, creative market and all the, all of that. And it's basically like a silhouette of the couple. Um, it'll have like a heart, it'll have like a map basically showing like where they met. Um, and then, Oh, okay. So I mean, like in the most literal sense, an info infographic, like like wedding kind of history content type. Exactly. How many days the couple has been together for things like their first date, things like that. Wow. Okay. No, I've, I, I can't say I've been to a wedding that's had that to my knowledge. I haven't seen it either. That's what's funny. Like, yeah, yeah, but what I've, but when I looked at shops that were selling it, the way they were displaying it was like in place of the menu. Cause usually you'll see the menu on your dinner plate, but, um, or the charger. So they're showing the infographic in place of the menu instead, or on top of the menu or something like that. that, um, Or it could be included in like the favor or something. See, I would have thought that that would have been a, like a banner that's like hanging right? Like you can also, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Actually graphic that's either, well, either vertical, like the ones you can get from Vista print that kind of pop up uh, like this. So yeah, you actually just reminded me, they've also shown where you can print it out. And I don't know if you're also referring to this, but like a, a big like chart, like a, like a big on a, what's it called? Like not a big canvas, but like, instead of like a seating chart, like on a, like on a board basically where you walk in. Yeah. Instead of, um, seeing like a welcome to, you know, that's um, right. It's these, propped up and it's like, yeah. Yeah. It'll be like in the front kind of. So yeah, you can also offer um, the template in different sizes. Again, going back to offering your customer, like all of these different variations, you can offer them in a, in a large size, let's say like a, like a 24 by 36, I guess, um, where it would show that at the front of the hall. So. Okay. And so then uh, uh, like a sub question to that, that I'm sure people are curious about is, um, there's obviously a lot of ways to sell <laughs> templates depending on the uh, program that you make it in, depending on the tech savviness of the 
the individual uh, to use certain programs. For example, I'm sure there are templates for Illustrator or InDesign or Photoshop on there that are being sold that professionals are probably downloading and editing themselves. Others are maybe like an editable PDF. But have you, I guess what I'm asking is, has you have you have you tested selling the template as like what would be a link to, for example, like a Kittle project or what obviously a lot of people do is selling a link to a Canva project versus s- selling the file or the PDF or the editable. Like, have you tested that? Or, I mean, I would assume what's much easier is they get, they open up the Kittle file. For example, they, you know, they input all their stuff and they download it. I'm assuming that's easier. I'm just thinking about the nuances of like printing it. And I'm almost like, well, I guess I would, I guess I would like provide it as a PDF so that it's like bound right for the printing. But maybe that's not the case. Maybe the, maybe the editability is more important. I don't know if that question makes sense, but. Yeah, I think I know what you mean. So do you mean more of um, selling them a template that they can edit versus um, like a PDF that I would customize for them based on information that they provide me? Uh, no, more of like, well, that, that would be, I guess, what's called a customizable product, which I guess you could do. I think it would just take you a long time. It I just guess wouldn't be I'm, passive, which is... Right. It wouldn't be passive. What I'm saying is like with, with, with PDFs or with Adobe PDFs new fill-in sign, you can set it up so that the PDF is editable. Yes. Um, okay. Yes. So that versus the live project that they would click into and edit, which I'm still... Again, I'm kind of fighting this, working this out in my my brain right now, which one is more easier to do. I would assume it's the template that they can edit live and then download. I'm just wondering if which one is, if you've tested either of them and know which one sells better. Yeah, I have sold, like I haven't sold Adobe like templates, but I've sold um like I do, like obviously like I'll create PDF files that they can use. I think it's called just Adobe Acrobat Reader where they could just right. kind of like add that's in their own. Saying. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. That's, I should have just said that. Yeah. Yes. I just think there's not as, uh, as many like customizations that you can do with that. Like whereas right. with Kittle, yeah. you can move things around so much more. You can move the images, you can remove the like, or sorry, you can move them around. You can delete them. You can change up the, you know, like where the text goes and everything. Whereas I think with all the Adobe PDF templates that I have come across because I've purchased, like I haven't, uh, created them myself, there's just not that much that you can edit. It really is just like a fill in. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And I find those work much better for planners as opposed to like a wedding Uh, invitation where you kind of almost want a little bit of like the design freedom. Like you want to be able to change up where the flowers go and things like that, or even like move around the text a little bit more. Um, And that's what I sold more of. Like I sold, uh, yeah, templates where you can move everything around and people more enjoy that. And I find that from my research as well, a lot of the templates that are sold like on Etsy right now, they don't come specifically from Adobe. Like they'll come from Canva. um, And now, you know, Kittle does offer the templates now. So like it, Again, I just, I find that it's just more customizable and just way better for the customer. And I think they'll get way more positive reviews in that case because they're, you know, they're able to change it however they want in many ways. All right. Excellent. Perfect. All right. So what is our, so that was, that was wedding programs. Um, What's our next easy digital product? Yeah. So my favorite one is clip art. That was, yeah, very eye opening for, and I, I specifically in my video, I said PNG files. I really meant like PNG files, like for clip art, um, because the bet, like so many shops that I found, it was overwhelming on Allura on how many shops are doing so well. And each one of them, once again, have a very specific aesthetic. They're very different from each other. So there's a lot of, you know, inspiration that you can take from them and sort of create your own. Um, and, I like I have a class on on Creative Fabrica actually where I talk about how you can create your own clip art using Adobe Illustrator and um, I find Kittle is very like it's similar to Adobe Illustrator only and I've talked about this in my videos where it's just much easier to use 
Um, but there's just, there's so much you can customize. They have like so many advanced tools that are very, very easy to use and you can create your own clip art, um, you know, sort of like, and I've, and I've created stickers using, uh, Kittle. Um, and mm -hmm. I have a video on that as well, where you can use kind of like combine different elements and different text and bring in your own graphics. Like you can upload your own and sort of create right, your own right. sticker completely from scratch. You can also combine AI, like Kittle AI to create your own That's sticker right. package. Um, so yeah, uh, clip art and stickers, specifically using PNG files because customers want to use it for their own projects um, and sort of customize it for themselves. Um, and usually it will it will come in like bundles. So usually, sure, um, sure. yeah. And I've seen some listings where they'll have like one to five stickers, but usually it's about 10 to 20 stickers and they perform really, really well. And a lot of them are even just like simple vector like images where it's just black and white silhouettes that perform yeah. really, really well. That's usually what I, so I have some, some good success selling just black and white uh, and I'll just oh, nice. sell, I'll sell the PNG and the vec and the SVGs of each mm -hmm. one. Um, you, I, you, you have me a little bit curious on how you're using the word stickers. So like, are you using, I'm just thinking about like key terms here. Cause what I'm usually focused on is like, obviously words like clip art, clip art pack, yes. uh, you know, whatever, uh, uh, if I'm making like a nautical or like I have this one that does really well of like Christian symbols and stuff like that. But when you're using stickers, are, are you saying like sticker clip art or like how, how, how would that description like, are those two different things? We have clip art and stickers, or is it They're like... They're both, actually. I okay. know it can, it, it can be kind of confusing, and there's a couple of ways to sell it. And I've actually okay. had to purchase listings to see how other oh, shops are offering okay. them. Smart. So sometimes they offer each one as a separate PNG file where it's got the transparent background, and then they'll have the white border around it so that you can either use it, yeah, like on a, on a digital project that you're working on, or you can actually print it out and cut the sticker yourself, okay. um, or like on a cricket machine i haven't used right. a cricket machine before but i know yep. that you need that outline um so specifically for cricket machines i noticed that those are performing well but also um there were packages that i purchased where they will have like um uh like a not a letter size but like just like a big like sheet where they will have a bunch of stickers on one sheet so that people can oh, yeah. Sticker print sheet. That. yeah exactly like a sticker yeah. sheet and then they can print that out and have that cut from a printing uh, company or they can cut out themselves at home yeah so that's just buy their own. A, yeah that's technically a physical in product actually actually the i mean i know the product yes. that, that you're selling is digital but it's actually a physical end uh, yes product. so there are shops that will offer both they'll have okay. one where it's just yeah Got again it. like Spis like um like for you to do what you're gonna do with it yeah exactly. okay yes exactly got it. yes um and then the other uh thing that i wanted to mention i think i also mentioned this in the video but like tumblr um like files like or like can be printed on tumblr specifically are performing really really well i think actually like, like sublimation files yes yeah yeah so like files that um and they get these like templates from I don't show it in the video how you actually transfer the templates onto like the tumblers to show like on an Etsy listing, but those are performing really well. You'll probably see. A mock -up. <laughs> sorry, the uh, mock-ups. Yes. Yeah, it's probably a mock-up, but but there I'm is. Sorry, one. that's that's exactly what I mean. Like ha showing how to right. use the mock-up and things like that. Um, I think Kittle has for tumblers as well. I know that we there's do. mugs. Yep. Yes. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. And water bottles and stuff like that. So I mean, exactly. they're all the same. It, the the concept would work the same if you have the. If you have the cylindrical sub sublimation machine, which the the biggest, I think the biggest and easiest best seller in the, at least the cricket world is the mug one, um, where you sublimate to like a mug, like a ceramic mug. Yes. Um, so yes. if you have whatever the the detail is for your metal bottle, it's it's the same across tumbler or water bottle or whatever cylindrical surface is metal. Yes. Yeah. Again, like for like tumblers, mugs, and all that, I find like Kittle AI is also really really fun to play yes. around with. Um, yes. to sort of. Um, yeah, just come up with uh, unique designs. The cool thing too is I look at Kittle AI as kind of like an assistant. So it's almost like there's oh, yeah. two designers involved. You can't really copy anyone, which is a good thing because you're going to come up with a prompt that's like kind of similar to some bestsellers, but it's always going to come up with something completely different. So that's right. always a, a fun project that I like to sort of play around with to see what I can come up with. So, yeah. And yeah. now we have the the prompt history feature now where you can actually recall uh, yes, what prompt I love it. you used. And you can also go in and see the prompt that other people used in the Kittle library. So one thing I was demonstrating is maybe I want to use this one prompt 
from this creator that made this beautiful image. I can go ahead and insert that prompt, but I can I can change it. I can add words to it. I can use a different style. Um, but I know that because their prompt was successful, I have this kind of starting place to do. And so you're absolutely right. Not only do you have the assistant of Kittle A, not AI, but now with our kind of integrated features, now you, you kind of get the intelligence from all of the other creators in Kittle yes. that you can use at your disposal. Yes, yeah. What, what I want to do is just briefly turn to KDP. Okay, because um, it's still digital in so much as what you're providing uh, to the KDP platform is is a digital file, but it can become, you know, an actual physical entity, which is really, really cool. We get a lot. We actually get a lot of questions about this. We get a lot of questions about coloring books. We get a lot of questions about ebooks. We get a lot of just general design questions about KDP. And I think now that that's becoming a lot more popular, people are realizing that they don't have to like write an entire like novel or they don't have to write like an autobiography or something like that. Uh, they can create these coloring books or just journal or whatever and, and sell it. And so I want to get your thoughts just kind of broadly about how you go researching about uh, KDP. Like what, I mean, I think it would be daunting to sit there and be like, I have got to come up with a stellar idea. And then all you kind of really think about is something that you like, which is fine. But then it's like, you don't know if that's going to sell. And mm -hmm. so then you go on Amazon, you start looking at examples of which there are tens of thousands. And so that's not really helpful. And so, yeah, I don't know where, where, but, it, but it's so powerful because I see it pop up all the time. KDP tutorial, how to, you know, and we have some too, but like, yeah. yeah, just where where do you kind of start with this and, and what should we know? Yeah, and this is why I love like learning from Etsy has like I've been able to sort of um, implement the same strategies okay. on Amazon. It's just a matter of using a different research tool. So for Amazon, I use BookBolt, which is okay. really, really good for research. Um, you can figure out top 100 bestsellers on Amazon within a specific category. You can go in and, you know, like, let's say if you want to create um, a type of journal and then you can look up the top 100 and you'll see the bestsellers. Um, but what I find is a lot of new sellers will come in and try to create the easiest thing, like a, a okay. lined journal or something like that, or like a blank planner or a blank sketchbook or something. Which is just um, uploading a document of a hundred blank pages, right? Exactly. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, and KDP does not like blank pages, um, but uh, it would be like okay, lined, yeah. like a line journal or something oh, like okay. that. Oh, okay. Got it. Got um, it. And sometimes it can sell if your cover is amazing. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But if there's nothing else that it offers, it is going to be really, really hard to make sales, especially if you're not paying for ads. Um, mm. And even then it might be really difficult. Okay. So I use BookBolt to for, number one, I look at the top bestsellers within a specific category, but sure. then usually I scroll down to the ones that are not the most popular, but they're still getting, let's say over a hundred uh, yeah. monthly sales. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, and then I will go into, there's a keyword section where you can search for whatever it is you're looking for. Let's say if I want to create um, a unicorn coloring book or something like that, sure. um, I can search this in, in BookBolt and it will show me the Amazon monthly search volume. So how many for those key, For those words, right? For exactly. That, in that, yes. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's step one. But then okay. step two, you have to take a look at the competition on Amazon. So the sweet spot I always say is if you can find a, a specific keyword phrase that has higher demand than competition. So I'll go on to amazon.com specifically okay. and I will type in the keyword phrase. So again, let's say it's a unicorn coloring book. I'm sure that's very competitive, but just off the top of my head, um, especially if you can find one that is less than a thousand results. Okay. So similar strategy to Etsy. Lot. Kind of, because that's the what exact I, same I, look, I look for 3000 and below, but that, that makes no, no, sense. And that's, and that's really good, especially yeah. if your Amazon search volume is higher. So there will okay. be ones that I find that the search volume is like over 4,000 searches a month. And then in the results, it's like 500. So that's the sweet oh, spot. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's the sweet spot. Um, and then then obviously you have to have a very appealing cover because that's the first thing okay. that they're going to see. It's okay. just like having like the best thumbnail image on Etsy. Oh, yeah. You know what sure. I mean? Sure. Um, yeah. Having a really, really good eye catching cover is really, really important. And that's where, you know, 
tools like Kittle come into play where you can have something that's very eye-catching, colorful, um, and you can play around with different covers. So what I would say is once you find a specific type of book, maybe a, a coloring page, and I say coloring a coloring book because they they perform really well on Amazon, especially for getting very specific. Um, let's say like a space uh, a coloring book or something like that. Um, you can sort of change up the interior pages a little bit because um, uh, KDP does not like having the same interiors for every single book that you're uploading. So you are going to want to customize a few of the pages to make the book a little bit different and then play with different covers, like cover pages, and see which ones are getting the most clicks. So again, very, very similar to Etsy, where I always recommend duplicate your listings and mm. see which thumbnail is getting the most clicks. Interesting. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I highly, highly recommend Book Bolt, just like I recommend Marmalade and Allura and Sales Samurai for Etsy research. You definitely need something to help you figure out which books are not only getting the most traction, but not many sellers are currently offering this type of book. Okay. Can you give any insight into other things that can be crafted other than like coloring books. Cause I, I think right now that's kind of like the poster child for what everybody wants to do. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, is like make a coloring book. Right. Cause all they need to do is have the images with no color in them and they can put them yeah. on the page and then upload 10 pages or 13 pages or whatever of that. But uh, there's, there has to be more practical items that you can sell through KDP. Right. I think. Oh, yeah. that, that, so do you have any other suggestions um, or advice for for things that we can create? Yeah. Um, so I actually have a video that's coming up really soon and I show exactly how I found this idea. Um, a password book is also really, really good. Um, Interesting. And, okay. Yeah. And it's it's yeah. And it was very random when I went through the research, but password book is really, really popular right now. I've seen a few bestsellers and I think the search volume was like 500 and some, sorry, not search volume. The results was like 500 and something for a login and password tracker. Like literally and just a, like a notebook that you write. Literally. Yes. Yeah. Wow. And and what's great is um, KDP has something called A plus content where you can show the inside of your book. Yes. So when you do your research, you can take a look at what other password books offer so that you can offer something maybe even better. Um, but it kind of gives you an idea of what, you know, customers are gravitating towards. And that's it's pretty easy to create. And a lot of them have like tabs where they have, you know, alphabetical tabs in there, which again, very easy to create with Kittle's elements and Kittle's text and all that. And just create boxes where you have the website, the like a space for the website, space for the login and password. Right. And that's it. It's basically um, like one password, but. but pre like, yeah, pre yeah, pretty much. And then in a book. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And then you would just, um, if you're using Kittle, you would literally just duplicate all of the yeah, pages and just change right. the letter for the tab and then yeah. save that as a PDF. So that was one that I found. Another recent one that I, um, I actually did a video on this too, but it's still pretty good now is a uh, meal meal tracker and fitness planner. So okay. uh, where people, yeah, will track, you know, what they're eating every single day and what workouts they have. Uh, they're doing every single day. So that's another one too. I find trackers are just really, really good. Like mood okay. trackers is another one and habit trackers. Um, so that's a really good one. Um, graph paper is another one too that I found recently. So again, very easy to create, <laughs> just a bunch of lines. But again, I think it's the cover that's getting most of the sales. You know what um, I think? I think I think what also might, well, this is very niche. But perspective paper, I think, would be, which is, takes a lot more effort, I think, to create. But yeah. basically, it's like for artists and drawers, like, and there's not a ton that are super great, but like just perspective paper. So like having it like really thin and then it like kind of diamonds out would yeah. be interesting. If you're saying that graph paper is like, which is also very specific, considering schools do everything online now. Um, I mean, I haven't done the research on that, but that sounds like something that would probably be great yeah, to would, into because yeah, it's so specific, right? Like it is said. so specific. Yeah, yeah, you're yes. right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, activity books as well. So, um, and again, okay. activity books for kids. I find a lot for kids that are very, very popular, but like activity books were like um, tracing, uh, like tracing letters and things like yes, that. Yes, yes. Um, I, I have planned several of just my own, like 
lettering uh, oh, nice. and like yes. drawing letters and ideas for like stuff that's maybe a little bit more educational than just like a b c d you know what i mean yes yeah yeah absolutely exactly so um yeah so i found that one was a really good one too um and you can switch it up like i know we've already talked about coloring books but like you don't have to just have a coloring book like an activity book can have 10 Multiple different types of pages within yeah. exactly i believe there's yeah. also a, a tool um that you can give this tool uh like a prompt or an idea and it'll create a crossword puzzle for you there uh, is and then you, there can, is. you can export that and put it in the then put it in the thing with the I forget tool. what the tool is called but I've used it for word I search forget that's what I meant that's what I meant word yes search. yeah that's yeah I forget about. what it's called but I have used it once yeah I, it's yeah. I'm blanking on it entirely but like just a fun book of like those would be Probably. Yeah, like you put in all of your words, like I put it all in like a spreadsheet and I copied and pasted it into like a box and then, and then, it, and then it created it the image. Yes, you're yes. right. That's yeah, right. you can do that. Yeah. That's a, I that's forget what very, that is. Oh my gosh. And now I, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Cause I did it for like one of my events. Like I hosted an event and I did like a word search, but ugh, I can't. Oh, that yeah, leads me to, um, like, um, Matt, like a Mad Lib. Uh, yes, that's another one too. That's a great, yes, exactly. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not like I find a lot of the keywords that I'm finding right now, again, it, it changes all the time. That's why it's so important to actually use the tool and see what's coming up now because it's all, it's always changing. But I find that like specifically like activity books for kids is already a great keyword. Mm. And then you would search that on Amazon and see what types of activity books are coming up. Okay. And then those bestsellers will kind of give you an idea of what activities you can include in your book. And of course, when you're uploading your listing onto KDP, there's a spot where you can put in your keywords and all that. That's where you want to get very specific okay. to help you rank. Again, very similar to Etsy, just different tools. That's right. Yeah. Since so much of it kind of is, is centering around kids, which which definitely makes sense because it's this kind of interactive thing they can do with their hands. Um, uh, do, do you find it necessary to put uh, like age range on these covers or in the title? I, I'm, I'm just thinking about that because now I'm thinking about maybe the tracing letters. That's yeah. that's more appropriate for a certain age group versus just a coloring book. Um, versus like a word search. Um, so I, yeah, I would not only because, um, it helps you rank properly for the customers that are actually searching for your book, but it will help you with reviews because if people buy something that it's for their teenager and it's actually for a toddler, <laughs> they're not going to be happy with it. No. <laughs> um, so the more specific you can get, uh, the more you're going to make your customers happy. And the more, again, like, I find that the more specific, the more niche you are and the better chance you have at having the right target audience gravitating towards your listings. So yes, I find that very important. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this has been a jam packed hour of advice and idea ideation going back and forth and coming up with ideas. So hopefully everybody has gotten value from this. Sandra, what I want to know is if you can tell us what's, what's coming up for you. I mean, you, you, you've, You've been away for a little bit, rightfully so. I, I know the ideas are brewing. You know, you got stuff coming. So, so what can we expect uh, to see on the channel soon? Yeah. So, um, I have been on maternity leave for the fa uh, the past few months, and I will be on maternity leave for almost the rest of the year. But I am slowly getting back into YouTube, uploading new videos. Um, I will be uploading more. Um, Kittle tutorials, KDP tutorials. I've recently opened up a new Etsy shop that mm. um, actually focuses more on my target audience now, like who I am. It's actually uh, catering towards new moms. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So, and that's why I always say, honestly, it doesn't matter how many competitors there are. If you have a specific product for a specific target customer, you're going to get sales. Like my new shop, I just opened it maybe a month and a half ago. I already have 20 sales. Oh, Actually, okay. I think I just got a new sale like yesterday. So it doesn't sound like much, but I haven't been doing much for it. And the fact that it's very, it's brand new um, and it's been making sales. I'm very happy with that. So I'll be working on my new Etsy shop. Um, uploading hopefully a couple of videos a month, um, just basically sharing the tools that I'm currently using yeah. to build up my new Etsy shop and my new um, uh, KDP account as well. Okay. So you'll kind of be documenting that so, to speak, so that, yeah, so that people can see, yeah, people love, 
uh, myself included, like kind of kind of getting more of an inside look. Uh, what worked? What? How's it going? You know? Yes, things. like realistic results too, right? Yeah. Like because uh, a lot of the time we do talk about very very successful sellers now, but they've been going through it for years, and it might not be yes. realistic for a new seller coming in now. So I just want to show exactly how it's going for me. And I have uh, another thing too is I've recently created some free resources for everybody. I have a new digital product roadmap, basically oh, okay. the steps that I have followed to sell every digital product that I have right now that's wow. successfully selling. Um, and then I also have a printable wall art sizes guide. So because oh, wow. it's just something that I've okay. had many, many questions on. And then finally, um, an Etsy uh, shop setup checklist. So nice. a lot of new free resources that people can sign up for to help them with their digital product business. Amazing. Fantastic. Well, everyone, please go check out Sanders channel. It's down linked in the description, as well as our previous conversation, which you can find in the coffee with Kittle playlist or down in the description as well. Uh, definitely check out those resources that Sandra is talking about. Don't forget to subscribe to Kittle as well. If you've watched this far in the video, I'm assuming you're subscribed, but if you're not, it'll take you one second. Just click that button. It's not red anymore for whatever reason. Uh, give this video a like, share it with somebody that might get value from this and drop us a question below. If there's something that we went into that didn't make sense or you want to learn more about, that's just more videos that I can make, more videos that Sandra can make, more videos, conversations we can have together. So please let us know in the comments what you want to learn more about and we will see you in the next video. Bye.